week. It's Bishop Manuel Grady and the lovely Pastor Linda G. How y'all doing today? And we're coming to you from the comfort and the security of our home as we go through this process of the coronavirus and all of that. But we're not going to be concentrating we're on, on lockdown, that today. Y'all. We're on lockdown. Yeah. We, we straight up on lockdown. <laughs> she used to it. She's been locked down and she's been locked Quarantine. up. She's been locked up before. But what we want to talk about today is just having the peace of God during this tumultuous time. Philippians tells us that we're to be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, we're to apply a trust of God. And that's what we want to talk about today, because a lot of things have been happening and changing in our world. And we're living in a world we haven't seen before. Yeah. But before we get started, listen, let's have a word of prayer. I need yeah. you to go and grab your Bibles because we're going to talk a little bit today. And uh, But before we start talking, just want to pray. Everybody grab hands. If you're with your loved ones, just grab hands and let's just pray. Father, we bless you and we honor you. You're so amazing, God. You're so glorious and, and powerful, God. You're holy and you're omnipotent and you're good to us. And we are so thankful that in this season, Lord God, you are with us. You are yes. beside us. You are guiding us every step of the way. Lord God, you already told us to not worry about anything, to not be afraid, Lord God, to, but to put our trust in you. And that's what we're doing today. So we're praying for everyone that is watching. Lord God, that they will put their trust in you and believe, Father God, that you got their back and you got them covered, even as you have us covered right now. Mm -hmm. And we give you glory and we give you honor for that. Now, bless us as we come forth today. We love you. We praise you. You are amazing, God. Absolutely. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope that prayer really blessed you. You know what? Because uh, it blessed me. We are in a crazy time, Bishop. We're, we're, we're in a strange time. And I know some of you might be thinking, OK, y'all not six feet apart. We're not going to be six feet apart because we married. We are one, you know. And here's her thing. If I go down with the, with the Corona, she going to go down to Corona. Ain't it right, right or die? Really? No, uh, maybe that's not right. But <laughs> at any rate, there has, to be, there has to be some kind of balance to how you live your personal life inside your home. And I, we, we pray that your home is, is, is covered and we it's know sanctified. it's covered with the blood. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these are different times. It's these crazy are, time. And I know we say tumultuous times, but let me ask you something. What have you discovered has been different the way it's impacted you since all of these um, ordinances have gone down, you can't gather and things like that. Church is the obvious one, but how has it impacted your life? Uh, it's just, it's been crazy because going out and, and seeing people, I run into people that I haven't seen in a while and you want to embrace mm -hmm. and you can't. Yep. I ran into a, a good friend of ours. Uh, we know her from our former church mm -hmm. and uh, she and I was like, Oh, love you love you so much <laughs> air hug. but yeah uh, air hug but it's it's been crazy like that because you're not used to putting those things in practice because yeah especially as believers um as soon as you meet somebody you see them the mm -hmm. first thing you do is you embrace you hug and you, it's, and part, you of, it's part of our yeah. kingdom culture absolutely yeah. And, and, and the same thing for me, even, even um, dealing with business and things like that, because, you know, you go to shake hands or do whatever we're used to doing. And it's a constant reminder. Maybe it should be. It's a constant reminder of what we're dealing with. But at the same time, I think I really believe this. I really believe some of what. First of all, let's say this is not judgment by God. This is not judgment by God by any means. But it is predestined. But it's predestined. It's prophecy. It's, it's prophetic. God knew it was going to happen. And it's just like Job. You know, the mm. enemy came to attack Job's life, um, but it was not God doing the attacking. Yeah. But he was showing us how his ability to protect us in any manner of attack is prevalent and how it's a part of us being children of the Lord. So, you know, it got me it got me to thinking about the things that are being brought back to our consciousness in the times that we're having to deal with this. It's the essential thing. It's, yeah. One of the things that they're talking about in the media now, they're shutting everything down as of Friday of, of this of last week. Everything in Greensboro was shut down at yeah. five o'clock. Mm -hmm. And they only said that the essential people or the essential workers mm -hmm. are the only ones that's going to be allowed to go to work or whatever. Right. So I thought that's great. You know, mm -hmm. you got your doctors and your lawyers, first well, not lawyers, but your doctors and your first responders. First respond, and, yeah. Yeah. and I thought, okay, well, that's great. But there are some essentials mm -hmm. that we need 
as a body of believers and the people in general that we need to uh, put into play right now, yeah, too. Yeah. So we need to have our own essentials. And, and one of the things I think someone mentioned, maybe you told me this, is that the sale um, of Bibles are going up, where the people are getting them offline or from Walmart. Yeah, they can't keep them on the shelf You right can't now. keep Bibles on the shelf. And we know that some of, the, some of the people that are more cynical, they'll say, well, this happened in 9-11, and this happened at this particular um, tragedy. But the important thing is not doesn't to really be, matter. It doesn't it matter happened. how it happened. Yeah. or, quote unquote, how long it lasts, because it may not be what we think is a, a global turn in evangelism or something like that. But think about this. If one soul, two souls, 10 souls are impacted by realizing that we need more than just what we think we need, that the essentials with God are enough, then I think that that's worth it. One well, yeah, soul. absolutely. The essentials. Let's talk about them. The essentials, okay. I believe, what the essentials are is basically the word of God, mm -hmm. getting back to to the Bible, mm -hmm. because that's the only solidified truth that there is. Mm -hmm. uh, another essential is prayer. Right. Another essential is taking care of you. And another essential is taking care and getting to know your family again. And I believe that in this time, this critical time, that if we take these essentials along with us, the word, the, pr uh, the word, uh, prayer, prayer, getting to know our Savior again, getting reconnected with our family and friends mm -hmm. again, I believe that this is one of the things that's really going to strengthen this yeah. country. And I believe that when we come out of this, we're going to come out stronger. What do you, what do you think? It's, it's, it's it's relationships. Like, first of all, the relationship, like you said, with the Lord, the reason for reading the word is not just to, um, just, just to, to read, just to read and get knowledge and, and to memorize scripture, but it's, it's to get a relationship and understand the character of who the Lord is. And then that strengthens relationships between, uh, married couples. It strengthens the relationships with our children. Yeah. Um, I happen to believe that I think in some ways that this thing, the enemy has overplayed his hand because what he's done is yes, it's very inconvenient. Sometimes you need an inconvenient truth an inconvenient blessing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. David said, will I offer up to the Lord that which cost me nothing? Mm. He didn't want a convenient sacrifice to be given. It didn't cost him anything. So when, when you, when you look at what this has done is it's brought the children home from school. Mm. Yeah. That's inconvenient. But guess what? Mothers and dads are reconnecting to their children. Yeah. Um, in it, a way that they should have a long should have been anyway. doing way. All, all you along. know, we, we tend to let everything, the, the issues and the concerns of life drive us away from family, Absolutely. drive us away from relationship. Um, and that, I believe that really because of the business, the busyness of this country mm -hmm. and because we have so much mm -hmm. in this country, yeah. we are blessed and there's nothing wrong with being blessed. But sometimes the busyness can actually distract Absolutely. you from family, mm -hmm. from friends, from relationship, from husbands and wives, from getting everything that they need Absolutely. to be a total package. And so uh, he said the enemy's played his hand. I believe that. I believe yep. that he's played his hand to a point where he's overplayed, it. overplayed yeah. his hand to a point where uh, now people are being pushed back into family and husband and wives relationships are going to be yeah. strengthened in this. Uh, absolutely. Because it's almost like the empty nest thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, when when Angel left the house and then, you know, after after 18 years of taking care of your children and the last one leaves, all of a sudden you've got this somewhat stranger that uh, maybe you were friends and dating and you haven't done that, you know, in however many years, according to how you have children. Well, we know that's the case, yeah. don't we? <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh -oh. When Angel left the house, we were lost yeah. uh, because we had uh, at the beginning of us having her, mm -hmm. uh, well, we got pregnant. And then, uh, once she came six months in, we were starting the church. Yeah. And so two we, children, yeah, two children. Mm -hmm. So by the time the church had grew up and angel had grew up and, and left home, uh, we discovered that there was no us. It was us, the church and angel. And yeah. when Angel went off, we we dug into the church, but we realized that there was this huge hole missing. And I believe yeah. that that's part of the business of this country. We are mm -hmm. so busy building and we were so build, busy building the church and me being super mom and you being super dad and, and super doing pastor, super. Bishop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And super friend and super yeah. everything. And then our, somehow we got hit with kryptonite because it wasn't it wasn't just church. It was um the engagements that, that you had to do, yeah. the preaching outside of the church that you had to do, um, 
I'm on the airplane going from places to places. It was a remarkable time. It was wonderful. I'm thankful for it. Yeah. But I realize now in hindsight, like you always do, I realize the the, the stretching of relationship and the breaking of relationship. Mm. And if, if, if we're going to be, we, we're an honest couple. One of the yeah. things we pride ourselves on is transparency and trying to help you. And, and, go ahead. <laughs> do you want to be honest or not? Exactly. Yeah. And we want to help you in things you're going through. Um, our marriage suffered because of all of this. Our relationship suffered, obviously, first. That's the thing. And then the marriage suffered because you got to have a relationship before you have a marriage. And that's the thing. We were best friends when we were 22 and 23 years of age. But here's the thing, Bishop. We got together and we were two very incomplete people right. that did not, was not mature, was not healed, mm-hmm. not whole. And not we saved, got together, not saved. And we got together and... And that kind of grew with us. Yeah. And we realized that once, you know, our daughter went away and, um, you know, you had suffered the loss of your mom and all of this came back to haunt us again. Mm-hmm. You had two very incomplete people that was trying to make a whole marriage. And I believe that that's one of the things that one of the problems, I don't even know how we got here. Maybe this is where well, God this is intended for us to be. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but that's one of the things that most marriages and most couples are suffering from right now. They got together in an incomplete state. They mm-hmm. were two fractions of people right. trying to get together and make a whole. And it does not work that way. And in my case, as, as a, as a man and as a husband, I found that I found my perceived value and what I did as a pastor or how I provided or, um, what I did in, in line with what we, we do as, as leaders, as pastors. So, um, I found my pseudo security, because it was really false. It was fake. It was, and, and it was not essential. <laughs> it was and, not essential. And I thought, man, you know, life is good. You know, we've made, we've done this. The church is doing fine or whatever. And sometimes God has to come and says, that's not essential in your life and pull that rug out from under you. Because and it hurts when he pulls it. It hurts. It's a, yeah. it, it's, generally, if someone pulls a rug out from under you, you're probably going to fall backwards fall. and bump your head. You know? fall. And then you got to come face to face with who you really who you are. Really are. And you have to mature in that area. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that God was doing with us. We had to come face to face with who we really were. We didn't, we didn't have our daughter and her events, her cheering and her, um, her needs, her needs, <laughs> everything that we were attending with her. We didn't have that. We didn't have school meetings or anything like that. We didn't have homework. We didn't have any mm-hmm. of that. We well, I couldn't, I couldn't really do the homework. Anyway. I couldn't it either. Some of it, it was a challenge After for third me. third grade, yeah. I fell off. <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, we had to come face to face with ourselves. We couldn't hide behind anything right. anymore. And I believe that one of the things, one of the greatest things that's mar- uh, that is going on with married couples today mm-hmm. is they got something that they're hiding behind that they don't have to deal with the reality of who they really are as a couple and as individual people. And as I said before, my husband and I, we met, we were broken. We didn't know who we were. We were shattered. We was a mess. We got saved and we got religious and we fell oh, into the God. religious pattern and we still didn't come face to face with mm-hmm. who we were. And then we went into the parenthood status and we still didn't fall in, uh, come face to face with who we were. Then we went from parenthood to pastoring mm-hmm. and God in heaven knows that you got to put on a plastic face in order to pastor. Absolutely. So we never were able to come into the fullness of who we were. And never coming into the fullness of who we were, we never healed. Mm-hmm. And so if that's true for us as individuals and as couples, it's, it's multiplied among humanity. And I believe that right now, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has gotten to a place where there are millions of couples like us. Oh, yeah, and, and, and you don't have to be in ministry. You can be in any type of relationship. You can be in any type of business, any type of vocation. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world. So let's, mm-hmm. pastors, let's get this straight. It's not just about us inside our four walls. Okay. It's not just about our church organizations. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, the world. that he sent his only begotten son. And no, we're not children of God until we accept Jesus Christ. That's true. But he loves the world. And what he's doing is first, he's, he always starts. He does start with his church because charity and discipline begins at home. All right. And the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. See, if we could get ourselves right as individuals in relationship with God and then as God's church, then we could be speaking to this world in times like now of uncertainty. But we'll be speaking from the standpoint of power. But right now, we're not even dealing with the essentials of what it is to be a church. 
Yeah. Because we haven't dealt with, like you said, the centrist of what it is to be a human being. To be a human being. To be a man, being. to be a woman. And I'm going to tell you something. When God has to get you to that place where he wants to deal with that, because he knows that he has a greater work for you, mm-hmm. but he knows that he can't use you until he deals with that part of you that never matured, that never grew up, that never discovered who they truly were. And so when he has to do that breaking, it is a yeah. painful thing. It's, it's a breaking. And you're left feeling crazy, like, what in the world is going on? What's who happening? am I? You know, what is going on? My marriage is toe up from the flow up. Mm-hmm. It's jacked up from the back up. It's messed up from the dress up. It is just, it's toe up. Exactly. I'm using all your stuff, but yeah. that's okay. But listen, it, it, we were at that place and, and everything was happening, not to mention that he was dealing with uh, illness at the time and it was Mm -hmm. crazy but God needed to get us to a place where he could actually break away everything that we had used to cover up the fact that we had come face to face with ourselves so that we could be healed so that we could help you to heal and so we put we put band-aids on on gunshots Mm -hmm. you know hoping it doesn't bleed hoping it doesn't leak and then we go and we rip the scab off of things God is trying to heal and so in this essential state where God has us as families one thing that's important to us as as Grady's as the Grady bunch or whatever is on Sundays we um, mom mandates that everybody's going to come together and have dinner. And, we- and listen, moms, you need to do that too. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's so missing in this country right now, and God is driving us back to it, mm-hmm. is the family dinner table. Right. Not just on Sundays, but but in general. In general. And something powerful happens when you sit around that dinner table with family. Mm-hmm. You get an opportunity to find out what's going on in their world. They find out what's going on in your world. You get to laugh, act silly, and talk. Mm-hmm. And it just brings this camaraderie together that is missing. And the family makes up the structure mm-hmm. of, the, of, of, of the home and the home, Absolutely. the community, and then the community to your town, to your city, to your county. County, yep. to your state um, and and to the country. And if we want a stronger country, then we got to get back to the family table when you was talking we, we, about. We, we saw it in the movie Soul Food. We see it on, on the television show Blue Blood, Bloods. They always work that in somehow yeah. that even if they're having some discussion where they don't agree. They're still, even if there's conflict. Even if there's conflict or mm. confrontation, they're still there as a family. And, and, and we have to understand from see we, we've been so religious do there is no place in the bible where we necessarily where we have children's church there's no place in the bible where we have youth ministry and i know that tears people up let me say something there's nothing wrong with that but god intended for our children to learn who he is and to discover the kingdom at our table mm-hmm. by their bedside my father taught me how to pray he wasn't a overly spiritual religious man but he did teach me how to pray when i was a little kid on the side of the bed he knelt down with me i have never forgotten that i could hear him praying in his own way in in my ear today that stayed with me okay as at 3 years old or whatever the age may have been but it is a responsibility to teach and, and bishop jake said this and thank you bishop for this we have discovered now that what we've been trying to let the church do, we need to be doing in our homes. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I believe that God put us on this spiritual lockdown with these invisible ankle bracelets is yeah. what I like to call we got these ankle it. Because bracelets. now fathers get an opportunity to teach their children how to pray, yeah. how to worship, uh, to teach their children how to conversate. Mm-hmm. Because for the, for the most part, it's just been mom. Yeah. Mom's been doing it. Mm-hmm. Mom's been helping with the homework. Mom's been teaching the kids how to pray. Mom's been teaching the kids how to worship. Mom has been there. And now everybody is locked in yeah. together. Mm-hmm. And fathers actually get an opportunity at this time to be dad, to be father. And that's going to be great. And my hope is that even if your family has already been, quote unquote, separated by divorce, I really pray that there's enough civility that the parents can come together in this time, especially if you still have minor children that are still in the home. I think it's essential for you to come together and use this time, even though you can't go a whole lot of places, you can go check on your loved ones. You can go check on the elderly and the sick and the shut in or whatever, but you need to check your family and don't let the fact that perhaps, you know, you have some legal separation or some issues keep you from being a parent, keep you from the essentials of being a mother or a Mm -hmm. father. You have a almost like a reset button we're in right now. 
we have an opportunity to restart, to, to reboot, redo to redo, to recalibrate. You know, if you check out the Bible, you'll find that the Bible is a book of restoration. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1 and 2 shows us a perfect world. Genesis 3, man falls. The rest of that Bible is about restoration. That's right. To be born again. Finding yourself Finding again. Finding yourself back. It's getting back to God. Being re-centered with Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, what has been happening to me and all of this being home, I was already a home person anyway. You know, yeah. uh, I think our some of our greatest strengths are also our weaknesses, weaknesses. because my greatest strength is to be alone. Mm -hmm. I am a loner. I learned how to be alone because I was pushed into it and I love it. And so now just being in this house some days just by mm -hmm. myself, um, just worshiping and praising God and, and getting in his word and, and, um, and, and rediscovering the beauty yeah. of his word and the beauty of who he is and the beauty of who Jesus is and, mm -hmm. and the whole reason that he came. And it's just been so powerful. And so this thing, you know, us just being pushed um, back to, to the house, <laughs> mm -hmm. to stay in the house. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it's just been a beautiful thing. And I hope that you are taking advantage of every bit of it. Yeah. To when you're in the house, you're not begrudging it, but you're getting back That's to the important. basics of the word. Don't begrudge and it. And getting to know him in the power of his resurrection. I keep saying that lately. Yeah. Yeah. When you say begrudging, I, w I was just thinking when you mentioned that, I was just thinking of the propensity of a parent to be so um, short with their children because, you know, some of you, most of you probably have multiple kids. Um, I was the only child when I was 12. My daughter was an only child, but we always had girls in the house. I just asked for shit in the house. But I love the sound of them playing and giggling upstairs. I value that. And if you're getting frustrated with your children being home, think about the times that we are in. There are some people that are losing loved ones to this virus and they would give anything for the frustration. Yeah, I'm just thankful to You gotta be thankful. Yeah, I'm just thankful to be at home. And that's when, essential. You know, when when Angel gets home and this is another thing I'm so grateful for, that she is home in this in this season because she could still be out there in her apartment and knowing my daughter, she would be doing her thing regardless of what is going Leaving. on. But it is such a blessing that she is home right now. And so when she gets home from work, I'm just thankful, you know, when, when, when I'm making dinner in here mm -hmm. and just to know that she's in the house and, yeah. and, and not out there being crazy. It, it is a blessing. Um, the essentials, the essentials. we've talked about, Marriage, yeah, being one of the essential things. Family, being one of the essential things. Getting back to God, getting back to the basics of who He is, and why He came, and how much He loves you. Uh, these are these are the essential things that we need. Grabbing prayer and mm -hmm. holding on to prayer and intercession again, not just on behalf of us and our families, yeah. but on behalf of the people that we don't know, the people that we do know, and people around the world. Um, um, these are the essentials, loving people again, forgiving and, and walking in love and walking in truth. Mm -hmm. These are essential things that's going to help us to stand. And, and one of the things that that kind of seeps away from a society whenever there is a lot of opportunity to make money or income or commerce, um, Wall Street in our case in America becomes a, a, a big uh, point of importance to a society. One of the things that begins to seep out is compassion because the love of money is the root of all evil mm -hmm. and you can't serve two masters. And so when, when we pursue jobs and money and opportunity and position and status and all yeah. of these things, what happens is the humanity that we have, the essential things that God put in us, which is his character of love and compassion begins to go out the window. One of the mm -hmm. things we're seeing now is, is it's causing us to take another look, whether you're a believer or not, it's causing us to take another look at the simple, basic, essential things of life. Mm -hmm. You know, we've encouraged our congregation as much as the government will allow you to. If, um, if you can visit a shelter and serve food, I know that's that's still allowed because food service is essential. Um, we can't really go to the hospitals and things like that now if you're not connected. But you can call someone if you have social media and you know someone who's elderly that, you know, perhaps a lot of elderly people like to use Facebook or, or whatever, you can encourage them through social media. But the compassion 
has to find its way it back. It has to our find heart. its way back. And because it had left, people were so, so about sad. themselves and um, mm -hmm. me and what I think and what I believe, you know, and now people are being pushed back to seeing what's really important in life. And what's really important in life is family and your health. And, your health. and um, nothing else compares to that. Now, all the only thing that people are concerned about right now is their health, mm -hmm. their families, yep. and being provided for. Absolutely. You know, having a shelter, having a place to be. These are the things that God initially wanted us to be concerned with anyway. Absolutely. But because of the love of money, the mm -hmm. love, not just money itself. There's nothing wrong with having money. I believe that God, money is a tool. I believe that he wants us to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. In fact, he said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to have abundant life if you ain't got nothing. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But at the same time, Time, we had gotten away from that and it became all about money. But God has pushed us back right now where mm -hmm. it is about family. Yep. It is about your health. It is about having shelter mm -hmm. over your head in these times. And these are the things that are essential. And these are the things that are important. Right. And Bishop, I believe that if we stay right there, as a country mm -hmm. and we don't go crazy once this quarantine is over That's and we don't get out yeah. there and just go back to who we were mm -hmm. being mean, mean spirited, mad, trying to have our way, kicking, throwing temper tantrums, you know, I mean, just self-centered, self that were self-centered and all of that. Some of us. <laughs> and <laughs> all of that. But listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. If we, if we leave out of this thing and we keep what we got right now, mm -hmm. oh my God, this country's going to be amazing. Right. But the enemy knows that and he's going to do everything in his power to keep us at a place of being silly, sad and pitiful and self-centered. He's going to try to keep us right there. But if we leave this quarantine mm -hmm. and go out with the love that, and the things that God is trying that's, to deposit in important. us while we're on lockdown, I promise you this country is going to be amazing. Here's here's what Manuel and Linda Grady have learned. Not not Bishop Grady or Pastor Grady, not Pastor Linda, not Pastor G. This, this is what Manuel and Linda Grady have learned. Because the bottom line, that's who we are. Anyway. This is who we yeah. are. We're not a title. The biggest blessing that has happened to us in the last seven to eight years of our lives, which has been for those of of you that know us has been very challenging and tumultuous, um, have come from the things, not that God has given us, but has come from the things that the Lord has allowed to be taken from us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the financial issues that we had to go through, um, the, 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 the trying of our marriage and relationship, our faith. the trying of our faith, which works, which works patience, which marriage, you, know, you got to have faith to, to stay some, married and to be faith. married. You got to have you some faith to stay married or some Xanax or something. But anyway, but, but no it's, it's, it's no Xanax. It's, it's been what the Lord has, has allowed to be taken, not given. And we're always looking for what we can acquire. You know, what's the next thing we can get? If I had this, I'd be happy. Oh, if I just won that. Why do we do that? I don't Why know. do we think that stuff is going to make us happy? We cray cray. We're cray cray yeah. or crazy or whoever. But listen, stuff is never going to make you happy. We didn't have stuff. We had stuff running out the Yahoo. Just this summer, we gave away tons and tons of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. I gave away all my clothes. She gave away all her clothes. Y'all, and, and that's like TJ Maxx going out of business. I'm telling you, when she gave away her clothes. It's, it's, anyway, um, so understand that it is not what you acquire in things. Absolutely. You know, we preach this and preach this. And now I'm going to talk to you as Bishop Grady. We preach this stuff. But brother, when it comes home to roost at our house and we got to live by what well, we've been telling those saints to believe. And, and you know, if, 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 you, if I can just wave my hand, if they take everything from me, well, guess what, Bishop Boo Boo? Here you are now. Here we are now in this place where we're actually, the, I don't know <laughs> why I said, world, I don't know. Boo -boo. I just things sometimes come out. It's just essential things. I don't understand. But, but, he but, must have a wife named Pastor Tutu. Pa Pastor Tutu. I bet you. I bet you. Okay. But anyway, and, and it, we're, we're learning that. And, and when I hear my grandmother and the older saints say, I wouldn't give anything from my journey. I thought I knew what that meant. We but, learned but, in seven but years. But we have learned, especially over this past seven years. Because we realized what was really important. Yeah. And it wasn't, oh my God, it wasn't the amount of stuff that God had blessed us with because he did. We are blessed. He did. Even now, uh, even in, you know, taking away and giving away, um, we are still blessed. But we realized that 
in this journey, this seven year journey, um, it was what we discovered. Yeah. And we dis- I discovered that there was a man inside of him that I hadn't seen. There was a man that was hiding uh, behind brokenness that God would eventually pull out. And a man now that I see that is desperately trying to um, trying to find his place back to beyond. Can I say this? Yeah. Beyond, beyond what everybody thinks, you know, what everybody uh, sees or what everybody wants to believe. And, uh, but I'm seeing a different man now mm-hmm. and I praise God for this man, but it was that journey yeah. that we went through to, to be able to see how essential, uh, and, and beautiful, uh, the union of marriage was. Mm-hmm. We are working on our marriage and working on us as a couple and God is doing amazing and things. As individuals. Exactly. As a couple, as individual. And God is doing amazing things. And we want to continue on. We we really do. Um, and I'm not just talking about the marriage, but I'm talking about this conversation Ooh, because, because it, it, it is a, it's a powerful conversation. It is one that uh, I believe that everybody needs to hear. But before we continue on, I, maybe it'll be next week when we come back at you. But can we just go to a little break right now? And I want you to stay tuned. Because we'll be right back. Be right back. God bless you. Everybody, we're back. Listen, I uh, hope you enjoyed this portion of the show. Uh, we are going to be coming back next week yeah. and we're going to be completing talking about the, the essentials. essentials of marriage, really marriage and family. So we are excited. Hope you are. Hope you're going to come back and be with us. Bishop, can I pray for him? Yeah, let's pray right now because we know that perhaps somebody's watching that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And beyond that, we don't only want to pray for your salvation. We're going to pray also that in this time of being sequestered or this time of being shut in, that we are going to reconnect with our families, with ourselves, and that God is going to strengthen us. So repeat this prayer with me. Father. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you sent your son. Sent your son to die on the cross for our sin. To die on the cross for our sin. And by virtue of that death. And by virtue of that death, we have eternal life. We have eternal life. We receive Jesus. We receive Jesus as our Savior. As our Savior. And we thank you for the gift. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit that gives us the essential oil. That gives us the essential oil. The character. The character. The life. The life. And the presentation of and Christ. The presentation of Christ. And we know now. And we know now that we are born. Born again that we are born again. in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen now, if you pray that prayer amen. for us you're saved but my wife is gonna pray one more prayer and it's just gonna be a prayer of covering of love and of success for your home father we thank you for your grace and your graciousness and mm-hmm. your goodness and father we just thank you Lord God for covering our homes every door post every window seal thank father God Jesus. that you're covering us and protecting us from all seen and unseen dangers and for that we give you the glory and we give you the honor father we take authority over every demonic plague father God that is floating in the air every demonic plague that has been sent by the enemy Lord God that would try to um, uh, come upon us mm-hmm. to break us to stop us to to kill us out Lord. And we just thank you right now that we are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. Yes. We walk in the power and the uh, and the restoration of Jesus. And for that, Father, we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, Lord God, that no plague will come near us. And we thank you, Lord God, that we will not walk in fear. We take authority over every spirit of fear and we walk in the goodness mm-hmm. of your spirit and we walk, Father God, in boldness and confidence. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. You are amazing, God. Amen. 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 He He's an amazing God. Listen, 
Thank you for watching. We can't wait to be with you again. See you next week. And you let us come to your house and we thank you for coming into ours. And listen, thank you to our Life Lifters family for supporting us and for your tithe and your offering. We appreciate that. If you want to give into this ministry, there's information on your screen. There's Cash App, Life Lifters um, Church. There's also our website at www.lifelifters.com. And we have great resources there for you too. And we just thank you for this. It's going to be great. Things are going to get better. We love you with the love of God. Hit that subscribe button. No fear, okay? No Bye, fear. guys. Bye, y'all.